This is Talk About Topeka on Gab Local TV. This episode sponsored by Field of Greens and The Break Room. Here's your host, Chris Schultz. Well, folks, we're talking about the Conservation Connection. It's a series they have going on over at the Topeka Zoo, and we have Dennis Denwitty here to tell us all about it. This next one coming up is about the Kansas River. Dennis, this is very exciting. This is a very, is. I, I don't know how exciting it is, but it is necessary, <clears throat> right? This one touches close to home for all of us in Northeast Kansas, it's mm -hmm. true, right? The, the, okay, so we did, we talked about the, uh, the tigers uh, on the last Conservation Connection. That's how right. How did that one go? Uh, that went beautifully. That was uh, a very large turnout. Everybody got to hear a great uh, presentation on the tigers from one of the uh, nation's uh, foremost leading tiger experts. And then go back and meet uh, all three of our tigers up close and personal. All three of the cubs, but the parents also. But of course, everybody focused on the cubs. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it was a great, uh, great evening. Very cool. Okay, so this is, this is quite important. Uh, this time we've got uh, Dawn Bueller. Right. She's the keeper of the Kansas River? That's right. She okay. is the Kansas River Keeper, uh, employed by Friends of the Caw, which is basically the watchdog group on the Kansas River for all of us in Northeast Kansas. Mm -hmm. So uh, what, what can we expect from the presentation? Well, she's going to be here to talk about the Kansas River in general, numerous different aspects, including and especially the conservation aspects of it, because the Kansas River is 173 miles long, coursing through uh, Northeast Kansas here. Uh, it is the longest prairie-based river in the world and uh, takes up 53,000 square miles of watershed for that, which is almost the entire northern half of Kansas and parts of Colorado and parts of Nebraska. So needless to say, a huge river system with a huge um, watershed and everything that happens within that watershed impacts on the health of not only the entire watershed, but the entire river, all the reservoirs that the river feeds, and the 800,000 Kansans who get drinking water from the Kansas River, most notably Topekans, because we get all of our drinking water from there. We don't have a secondary source for that. So mm -hmm. um, needless to say, the health of the Kansas River uh, directly impacts on our health. And this is uh, quite an important topic, especially if we've been witnessing stories coming out of Michigan here. Uh, right. You know, th that when you don't take care of your water, it, it can't take care of you, right? So That's exactly right. Yes, as, we, uh, as we've heard from, uh, from Flint, Michigan, uh, you don't want to take the health of your river for granted because we depend on it uh, too much for essential things like our drinking water, but also for so many other things. You know, the sport fishing on the Kansas River is wonderful, but how did it get to that from the point in years past where it was not wonderful and you might not have wanted to eat fish out of the river? Um, mm -hmm. the, all the other sporting activities, uh, everything from canoeing to kayaking to all the things that people depend on the Kansas River for, it has a wide, a broad base of usage beyond just getting our drinking water. So Don Bueller for Friends of the Caw, she is the Kansas River Keeper and she's uh, the foremost expert on the Kansas River. Uh, she does an enormous amount of work uh, for the Kansas River and on the Kansas River. Uh, she's the watchdog for the Kansas River. She gets involved with everything from cleanup to legislation and everything in between. Uh, she is the one who makes sure that our Kansas River is healthy for all of us. And uh, so she's gonna be here from Friends of the Caw for uh, that evening on March the 10th, Thursday, March the 10th, from 6.30 to 7.30 to tell us about our river. And it's going to be amazing how much people are going to learn about the Kansas River that they've been next to all their lives and been drinking water from all their lives and yet never knew about our very own river system. You know, we, we turn that tap on, we get that water, you know, we turn that tap on, we take a shower. Uh, right. We don't know, we don't really think about where that's coming from or uh, what very we true. can do to make sure that for generations to come, that stays a clean, safe source. Uh, and so it's really good that this is a great... A, a, you know, event to learn a little bit about that and what it we is. can do uh, ourselves. Right. Now, uh, Friends of the Caw, this is interesting. I had not heard of this group before, so right. they're, they're kind of like a, an independent organization just dedicated to um, you know, preserving our river? Uh, they do a lot more than that. For example, all the different um, boat ramps and entry points up and down the Kansas River, you know, those things are provided by Friends of the Caw. Oh. Um, those things are financed by Friends of the Caw. And uh, so uh, they're actually one of those groups that directly impact on our lives all the time. Uh, but uh, they're not out there all, of the, all the time saying, hey, look at what we're doing for you. They're they're doing great work, they're doing wonderful work for all of us, and then they're happy to see that the work has been done and done well and that all of us benefit from it. So mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have to get Friends of the Call on your show so they can uh, tell all your viewers about what FOK does for us. Absolutely. That, that sounds like uh, 
Uh, you know, Dawn, give me a call. We'll put it that way. <laughs> we'll make sure she does. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very good. Okay, so uh, what else is happening over at the zoo? Get a little, uh, a little. I mean, we have so many things happening all the time over there. All the we time. Have some kind of unseasonably warm weather bringing people out uh, in February here, which is great. Yeah. Um, and so, tell us what else is going on. There's so much progress. The, the. You know, the, the, all the, the garden coming, the, uh, all the, the new things coming. It's so cool what's going on over there. It is. There's always a lot going on at the zoo. Uh, as you said, the, uh, the weather has been very cooperative with us lately. Uh, last weekend on Saturday alone, more than 2,000 people, which for a February outdoor activity in uh, northeast Kansas, uh, that's not just big, that's huge. You know, mm -hmm. we thoroughly enjoyed that day. Uh, we are currently restoring our pond system uh, because our ponds were starting to become less of the quality than what we wanted from them. So they are all currently being redone and uh, so they're looking beautiful and so that uh, restoration project is coming along very nicely, um, getting closer and closer to Camp Calabunga now all the time and uh, that's going to be a huge step for us and for the Topeka and Shawnee County community. So, when can we expect uh, Camp Cowabunga? What's the time frame on that? Well, the time frame is uh, still not solid on paper yet, so we're not announcing a specific start date yet. Uh, uh, there's still a little bit more work to do on that uh, design and uh, preparation for that, but it won't be too long before Brendan will be making, making uh, that news known. We can't wait to help spread the word on that. Yep. So many great things happening over at the Topeka Zoo. Mm -hmm. So uh, get involved with them. Go check them out. And a really great way to, uh, to get involved with your community is to make sure that we have safe water to drink from uh, and to bathe in. So uh, pay attention to that. Conservation Connection. It's coming up March 10th, 630 to 730. It's in the Gary Clark Living Classroom. And uh, it's free presentation. All you got to do is go over there. Uh, zoo admission gets you in, right? You don't even have to pay zoo admission. It's uh, better than 